Hey guys, it's Joe for PocketNow.com and today I want to show you my five top favorite apps for Android Power users. Let's go take a look. Alright, my very favorite, most favorite app for any Android Power user is this. It is ROM Manager, it is by Koosh, and it has made my life so much easier, it's just ridiculous. The current version is 3.0.1.3, and basically what this app lets you do is if you have a, a rooted phone with super user permissions, which I do, and most rooting processes require that you have super user permissions, uh, or at least are able to have them, but what this app lets you do, first and foremost, it lets you flash a custom recovery image very, very easily. In fact, if I wanted to flash this, I could tap, it would ask me if I wanted to, it would reboot, and I would then have the latest version of Clockword Mod Recovery, which I already do, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, in the past, that involved dropping down to a command line, uh, whether that's on the device or whether that's on your desktop, and actually running through a command that you either had to memorize or have written down somewhere it was case sensitive you had to do it exactly right if you got it wrong you know you'd run into problems so this takes all of that guesswork out it's a lot less painful and it really takes out uh, any chance that you have of breaking your device though I'm not gonna say it removes that entirely the next thing it lets you do is reboot into recovery mode where you can do a lot of stuff but a lot of the stuff that you do in recovery mode you can do from here for example you've got ROM management if you want to install a ROM that you've downloaded from the web, no problem. You can install a ROM that's on your SD card right there. You can download a ROM, and it's got a list of all of these that you can download, from CyanogenMod to some extras, even some uh, Sense ROMs and some custom kernels for overclocking and whatnot. It's even got my UI. I don't really know how to pronounce that, so I hope I got it right, uh, which is really, really cool. If you haven't checked that out, that's something to do. And then, of course, CyanogenMod Nightlies. It also lets you check for ROM updates to see if there's an update published for your ROM. And in this case, it looks like version 29 is available. I'm running 28 right now. So right there, I can say, okay, it'll download and install that for me all automatically. I don't even have to reboot the phone manually. It does it all automatically for me. So I'll have to come back and do that a little later today. It also shows me what other builds that I have already downloaded. I can install from a QR code which uses the barcode scanner app to scan a code and then it functions pretty much like install ROM from SD. It just says, okay, download it and install it right there. Very convenient. It also lets me manage and restore my backups and back up my current ROM. Sometimes permissions can get messed up since Android is a, a Linux operating system. Uh, various apps have various different permission sets depending on the user group. So this will go through. It takes about 10 minutes, but it will fix all those permissions. So if you're doing a lot of high-end, uh, low-level type hacking and whatnot, and you get some force closes, run that guy first, and that'll usually take care of your problem. You can partition your SD card. Don't do this unless your SD card is empty or unless you want it to be empty because that will erase everything. It's kind of nice that way. And then, of course, you can check for other Clockwork Mod recoveries or even flash an alternate recovery if you want to. So, for power apps, power user apps, this is probably the coolest and most powerful app that you can get. That's why it's number one on my list of my top five power user apps for Android. Number two on my list of top five power user apps for Android is Theme Chooser. Now, this is an app that came out uh, from T-Mobile, actually, and they released that out into uh, the public domain, or, or into open source, rather, and it was picked up and included in the Cyanogen Mod Nightlies. Basically, what that lets you do is it lets you install or apply various different themes, and it comes with a couple built in. So you can just tap on what you want applied. It gives you kind of a, uh, a screenshot that shows you what your color scheme is going to look like, some screenshots are a little bit more descriptive than others. Uh, right now, I'm actually running Honey Bread, so it's got kind of a honeycomb look to it. If I want to apply something new, uh, realistically, like Androidian, I love this one. We'll go ahead and apply that one. It's got a nice green theme to it and some, uh, some background images, but there you go. I'm all done. Really, at this point, I should reboot so that all of the, uh, the changes take effect, but very nice, very clean, 
uh, and a very quick and easy way to add a new skin to your phone that's not just a wallpaper, but it also includes colors for your uh, your icons up in your status bar, and also you know, all the other UI components as well. Uh, your dialog boxes, radio buttons, check boxes, that kind of stuff. Very cool. It lets you do a lot of powerful things to your device to make it stand out from everybody else. I really like it. I think you will too. That's why it's number two on my list. Number three on my top five apps for Android powered users is something that you really can't see. It's, it's not necessarily an app per se, it's a launcher. And the launcher here in this case is Launcher Pro. And I can go into preferences and show you here. It lets me do a lot of things and we've done a video on this in the past. Um, I bounce between ADW Launcher EX and Launcher Pro uh, almost weekly uh, just to see what the other side is doing to see all the advances. But what this lets you do is it lets you use more advanced widgets, it lets you resize your widgets, uh, it lets you change your dock background so you can really add a whole new level of customization using your uh, your launcher, in this case again Launcher Pro. So whether it's Launcher Pro or ADW Launcher EX, custom launchers, those two in particular, are my next most favorite Android Power apps. Number four on my list of top five Android Power apps or apps for power users is pretty bland. It is uh, just a, a terminal emulator. That's pretty much it. If you're familiar with DOS or if you're a Unix or Linux user uh, and like to get down to the, com the command prompt, this guy is it. If I want to uh, change over to super user mode, I type SU, press enter, and oh look at that, it's been granted super user permissions and now I can run command lines to change file level permissions, I can overwrite system files, I can do all kinds of stuff. I can even type the word reboot and it will reboot my phone. That's one of the reasons I like phones with a physical keyboard. I do quite a bit of work down here in the, uh, the command line level. Uh, you may not and you know if you don't that's cool. Uh, you know that's just fine. I uh, just exited super user now I'll exit the terminal and that's taking a little bit longer than I want to show on video but really cool lets you do lots of low-level stuff especially when you're talking about routing when you're talking about uh, customizing or doing any type of uh, really really get your hands dirty type of mods to your Android powered device that's why that is on my list of my top five favorite apps for Android power users and last but not least on my list of my top five favorite power user apps is actually a tie. First, it's Quadrant. Now, Quadrant is a benchmarking utility, and there are a few very vocal uh, viewers out there that think that this is not a very accurate benchmarking tool. And in fact, it's not. Uh, it does a lot of stuff well, but there are a couple things that it doesn't do really great. It does, however, give you one opinion about a baseline of your device and it lets you see how fast your device is compared to somebody else. It is a little bit biased because, uh, especially over to our Galaxy S variant friends, it's not optimized to use the, uh, the Galaxy S hardware acceleration. So those devices, even though they're ridiculously fast, don't score nearly as well as they should because the app doesn't take advantage of that. It just runs through the stock set of instructions. Now, the other camp would say, you know, well, that's because it's running the same tests the same way on every hardware, and that's really what a benchmark is. And today I scored really poorly for some reason. I got a 1653, which is about 800 points lower than normal. But uh, that's because I've been opening up and showing you all of these apps. little ad down there for Angry Birds Rio, which we showed you in a previous video. So that's why I like this other app as well, and that's why it's tied. For those of you who think that Quadrant's a little bit biased, well, it is. There's SmartBench 2011. Now, SmartBench is also a little bit biased, but it's biased in the other way. So when you look at both of the benchmarks combined, it gives you kind of a high watermark on what, uh, what the real performance is of your device. So it's always good to have a, a second opinion there, if you will. It's not quite as pretty to look at. Uh, it's not quite as widely used as is Quadrant, uh, but it does give you that second opinion and it's right there. So I like it quite a bit. We'll go ahead and let this run. I'll show you the score on that and then we'll sum everything up. 
So here are our scores. We can see up here on the top, uh, I'm getting a 1344 versus down here 1609. So the results are a little bit harder to read. You can see the Motorola Zoom performs really, really well. But all in all, it's a really good way to get a second opinion. And of course, because I don't want to leave you out, I've got a bonus app for you as well. It's something that Brandon already covered, so I'm just going to briefly mention it. It's speedtest.net. Uh, it is available free in the market, and it lets you test your speeds using whatever uh, whatever server, whatever type of wireless you've got. You've seen how this is done, so we'll go ahead and do it. I'm connected to Wi-Fi right now, so it's benching really well. You can see that I'm getting about 14 megabit per second down with about four and a quarter megabit per second up with a ping time that's just ridiculously low at 15 milliseconds. We can test it again to see how well it does. I, you know, I wish I could get these kind of speeds over my uh, 3G, 4G, but Alas, it's not quite there just yet. But this lets you know because speed is not just what's involved inside your device, it's also how fast you can connect to your mobile network. This is a good tool that helps you determine how fast that really is. And my last bonus app, because this is just five plus, you know, a couple, is Set CPU for root users. And you guys have seen videos on this before. With this app and an unlocked phone and a custom kernel, you can set the clock speed of your device. In my case, I'm running it at a minimum speed of 245 megahertz and a maximum speed of uh, basically 1.5 gigahertz. And I've got on-demand scaling. So it will increase the speed of my device and in turn, the, the speed at which the battery is drained based on the demand that's put on it. So this helps me not only have a super, super fast phone. I mean, this phone came with 800 megahertz uh, processing power out of the box and it lets me almost double that when I need it but it also scales way back like right now where I'm not doing anything but pointing at the screen it lets me scale that all the way down and helps me save some battery so really kind of a cool device you have uh, profiles over here that you can add so that it scales accordingly I've got a couple rules set up to uh, to scale down when the screens off uh, some people say that's not necessary but I put it in anyway uh, and then, of course, when your battery is getting low, it will scale back the speed of the device as well. There's lots of other stuff you can do, but in a nutshell, that's what it is. It lets you take control of how fast your device runs, and it can help you get some extra battery life out of it if that's what you are wanting. Of course, it also lets you burn through that battery a lot faster if you want to do that as well, which if you're plugged in most of the day, you may want to get the extra speed and don't care about the uh, the impact on battery life because you're plugged into the wall. So a little bit more than five, but those are my top five plus a few Android apps for power users. You don't have to use them all to be considered a power user, but you have to have at least one. If you have one or two on your device, let me know what it is and why you think that that makes you an Android power user or what type of Android power user tasks you can do with that that you can't do with just a stock device. Leave those down in the comments below. And of course, if you like seeing these kinds of videos, give us a thumbs up. Head on over to pocketnow.com to get links and prices on all of these apps. Some of them are free, some of them are not. We'll detail which ones are and which ones aren't over in the article again at pocketnow.com. For Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi.